episode 88 I showed Modern Mallard, which allowed people to play Dark Hunt on a LCD TV. It was invented by Jeff Keecher who made a Kickstarter campaign for the project. Sadly, the campaign did not attract enough money in time. Modern Mallard did however push Alexei to get his own project done, which does something very similar. In episode 98 I showed the so-called NES LCD mod project in more detail and interviewed Alexei. For this community I came up with a compatible gun design. People could now mod their existing guns or build entirely new guns to play NES LCD mod patched games. I am very flattered that my work was shown in an episode at one of my favorite YouTube channels called Candy's Classic Game Shrine. In early 2019, Hyperkin announced that they are going to release a commercial product, which from a distance looked a lot like a modern Mallard copy. The product is called Hyperblaster HD. I contacted Jeff and he told me that Hyperkin did not approach him whatsoever. Later Hyperkin told on Facebook that the Hyperblaster HD was based on the NES LCD mod project. This made me very curious and so I bought a unit after it was released in late 2019. The Hyperblaster HD gun deviates a lot from its prototype which was shown in early 2019. That one had a color scheme which resembled the Yobo NES light gun. The production version however resembles more the gun Hyperkin has sold for the FC Superloader and which was distributed by Yobo for the FC 3 Plus console. The similarity ends with the color, as the Hyperblaster HD gun is of a far higher build quality. It feels much sturdier because of the rigid thick plastic. Two included weights give the gun a great balance and make it very pleasant to hold. The manufacturing quality is still not on par with that one of an original Zapper or a Micro Genius clone thereof, such as the TLG403, but it outclasses all other more recent clones. A big flaw of the gun is the terrible side picture. The light blue side plate reaches right in between front and back side and obstructs much of the view. The trigger is tactile and clicky. On the bottom of the gun is a three position selector switch, which wasn't present on the prototype. Opening the gun made me grin for a good while, as Hyperkin first denied my light gun design, but then copied my resistor based attenuator approach. The own board is more sophisticated though. The three positions of the switch stand for three stages of attenuation. Furthermore, there is a low pass frequency filter which is active on the two more sensitive settings. I guess this three stage setting design is simple to troubleshoot, but we will see later in the review whether this was a smart idea or not. The Hyperblaster HD uses a Game Genie like cartridge, which is connected between console and game. It then applies the NES LCD mod patch to Duck Hunt and allows you to play it if it works. This idea was lifted from Modern Mallard, which proposed the same thing in order to circumvent the intellectual property rights of Nintendo. The circuit boards of the two projects are different and don't work the same way. Even though the packaging states multiple times that the Hyperblaster HD was compatible with Duck Hunt, this is not true. I own and tested the North American version and the Famicom version of Duck Hunt. Both didn't work with Hyperkin's patch board. The board is solely compatible with the Super Mario Bros and Duck Hunt double cartridge. It won't work either with the triple cartridge, which also contains world class track meat. Even when using the proper double cartridge, chances are that the patch board won't work as the used cartridge connector is very short and struggles to make a good connection to all the hardware revisions of the game board. I guess that's what their functionality may vary depending on cartridge disclaimer is for. The high incompatibility came as a surprise to me as Hyperkin was using proper Duck Hunt cartridges in the beginning of the year. This suggests that there were major revisions during development. Sadly, the compatibility issues don't end at the cartridge. The Hyperblaster HD doesn't work on the original Nintendo Entertainment System because of the lockout chip. Hyperkin has skillfully proven before that they don't have any clue what a lockout chip is and what it does by releasing their non-functional pin adapter. 
Inserting the patch board into an original NES will cause the cartridge to get stuck and the player has to open up the console to get it back. The Hyper Blaster HD claims to be compatible to the NES 100 run top loader and personally I have successfully used it on a Famicom AV and a Micro Genius IQ 700 run. I have found that the patch board isn't compatible with the Micro Genius IQ 500 run, the Analog Anti Mini and the Virtual Station. Unfortunately the bad news don't end here, because even if the player manages to find a compatible game cartridge and a compatible console, chances are that the game can't be played because of the limited sensitivity settings of the Hyper Blaster HD gun. If the gun is set up too sensitive, the gun will consider shooting the blue sky as a hit, which I will refer to as a false positive. This was a very well known problem in the very beginning of the NES LCD mod project and which I solved with my gun design. All of the three sensitivity settings of the Hyper Blaster HD gun yield in false positives on my Sony Bravia TV. Of course I can play the game fine using my own gun design as at the end of the day the Hyper Blaster HD is just a very cumbersome way to play a single game of the NES LCD mod project. The modern Mallard gun works fine too with the Hyper Blaster HD. The Hyper Blaster HD gun works with non-patched games on a CRT, so I guess if somebody likes the color blue and likes sturdy built guns but doesn't care about having a side picture, this isn't a terrible choice. Otherwise, this gun is a great disappointment. It puzzles me how the Hyper Blaster HD came to be. I would assume Hyperkin did not contact Jeff Keecher because they thought his work would be more expensive to license than Alexei's work, whom they thought they can underpay because he is Russian. Doing so, Hyperkin forgot that this isn't just a software problem, but also a hardware problem. Now they have splashed a development budget for at least two revisions of a gun controller and at least two revisions of a patch board, which both barely work, yielding in miserable Amazon reviews. All of this without even speaking to Jeff and talking about licensing fees. I sincerely hope that Hyperkin will learn that saving a dime won't always make you rich. The box design is appealing and it features glossy highlights. Besides the previously mentioned false claims, it dares to state that the Hyper Blaster HD was the first time ever Duck Hunt was playable on HDTVs. This is the end of the review. My name is Ben. I thank you for viewing.